leading up to the speech was the U.S. Navy sailors being held by Iran, 10 of them. They were released. Uh, that is, was being touted today by the administration as a major success. Uh, here is the Secretary of State and the Vice President. No, there was no apology. Nothing to apologize for. When, when, you, when you had a problem with the boat, you apologized the boat had a problem? No. There, and there was no looking for any apology. I mean, this was just standard nautical practice. I also want to thank the Iranian authorities for their cooperation and quick response. Uh, these are always situations which, as everybody here knows, have an ability, uh, if not properly guided, to get out of control. Well, shortly after those statements, Iran TV then broadcast a video of uh, the sailors uh, with, at gunpoint with their hands above their heads and one sailor's direct apology to the camera. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. Uh, uh, didn't have a special problem? We had no problem, sir. So what about all of that? You know, uh, many people are saying today, Charles, that uh, that conservatives jumped on it and that the president dealt with it in the right way and was calm and methodical and it ended in the right right way. Well, you know, the, you don't have to be a conservative to jump on the humiliation uh, of what just happened. If it were just the incident and who knows, it didn't show anything. That would be one thing. But look what the Iranians have done. They did the filming of this on purpose. They interrogated the sailors, and they demanded, obviously, an apology, and they got it, which is under the Geneva Conventions is illegal, but who cares about the Geneva Conventions if you're dealing with Iran? They then broadcasted it to the Middle East. Why? Because they're in a struggle with the Sunni Arabs, led by the Saudis and others, for dominance in the region. The others depend on the U.S. And this is a way of saying, you depend on the U.S.? Imagine if we were to destabilize your regime, enter your territorial waters, challenge you over airspace. Do you think the Americans, who now are essentially thanking us for seizing the American so sailors and for showing all this on world television, are going to support you? This is a show of dominance, and, uh, humi dominance by Iran. And the U.S. administration accepting and thanking the Iranians for their humiliation. This is extremely important in the Middle East. Apart from the seizure, it's what they have done since. And the fact that the administration has this completely passive, emasculated response is simply astonishing. George, understanding that he didn't put it in the speech, but today, after the release, that we didn't hear from an administration saying, okay, now release the other six Americans that Iran is holding. Now stop firing ballistic missiles. Um, was a little disconnected. It's disconnected, and I think we may look back upon this as the day when we entered Jimmy Carter territory. Late in the Carter presidency, fear, largely economic fear, was combined with national humiliation over, guess what, hostages held by Iran. Today, also, the Dow goes down another 365 points. This is a country today, unlike in Carter's time, but I think today about 14% of Americans have defined benefit contribution plans. So the Dow is sort of wired into the country's nervous system in a way that it, it didn't used to be. So th this is a bad combination. Obviously, it also comes as these implementation, the implementation of the nuclear deal happens, $150 billion heading Iran's way. I think what a lot of Americans have a hard time with is this idea of the president talking about the Iran nuclear deal as so separate from every other interaction that we have with Iran because I don't think that's the way that the Iranians look at it and I just don't think that's the way a lot of regular people look at this and you know to a point that you raised earlier there are other Americans that are being held in Iran Jason Rezaian a journalist who's over there simply trying to do reporting and there's a real feeling like the administration has sort of left those people out to dry they talk about wanting to get them back, but we don't see a lot of action. But quickly, for the administration that says, listen, if he had elevated it to the level of the State of the Union address and exploded it and there was a pushback, it would have been like the British sailors who were held for 15 days. Uh, by not doing that, they say, it de-escalated it, they negotiated out, and these 10 sailors, at least, are safe. We don't know what the backstory is, so you could find a plausible explanation for why 
He didn't want the president speaking about this last night. But what's happening now? They show American sailors on their knees being held at gunpoint. An administration does nothing. And this is happening. Imagine what's going to happen after we turn over the hundred billion dollars after sanctions are lifted, which is going to happen in a week or two. If the Iranians are this brazen right now when they're still waiting for the payoff, imagine how they're going to be starting next month.